Welcome to another Jags podcast, episode 50. We made it to 50 episodes, and uh, we're pretty excited about that here at another Jags podcast. We certainly, I guess we could have done it without our listeners, but it wouldn't have been nearly as fun. So we want to thank you all. And tonight, in honor of that, we're going to be answering a lot of your Twitter questions and uh, just kind of reacting to your reactions of all the news this week as the Jags wrap up the 2018 season with a 5-11 and record. I would say the most disappointing season in Jaguars history. You might be able to make cases for other ones, but I think this one is at the top. We are going to get to the news that was announced almost immediately after the Jags' final game, a loss to the Houston Texans, where Shad Khan said that the triumvirate of Tom Coughlin, Dave Caldwell, and Doug Marone would all be back. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Leonard Fournette and possibly some other things as well. We have our full crew with us tonight. Joey, Jason, Robert, and myself are all here. Before we get to all those things, we do want to remind everyone that we are on Twitter at Another Jags Pod, Facebook and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast. Also going to say this right now, that though the season might be over, our podcasting is not. We're still going to be here week in and week out for you. If you think that there's nothing to talk about during the offseason, we will find something to talk about. You're wrong. There's all, you are wrong. You're dead wrong. Uh, there's always Jaguar things to talk about, and we're going to do that. So we're excited about this offseason. It's kind of nice that the season's over, and we can really officially start talking about all this stuff. Um, before we get to the Twitter questions and everything, though, I want to ask you guys really quick. What was the single most disappointing thing about this season for you? Can I go first? Wow. I think you have to. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. I saw Joey about to talk, so I had to jump in. Before he said something. <laughs> I'll tell you what it was. First home game of the year was, uh, what was it? Like September 10th, maybe? Two, I think. Was it oh, week? yeah. It's the second week. They two. opened at the Giant. I walked to my favorite spot in the entire stadium. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was excited as, as ever, you know? Want to know. Pumped to see you. Home game. The Patriots. The Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was hot, but I was going to my favorite spot, the Sky Patio, and the Bell Tower, which we all know and love. It's, it's great. But when I got there, I was disappointed to see a huge 10 foot metal grate fence. And inside that fence, four to five dogs. Well, I mean, you got to keep the dogs on somehow, right? So, right. Uh, we had a Twitter question, and I want to uh, read the results to you guys. A Great. poll, if you will. A poll. We had a poll, which is fantastic. Right. Yeah. Which 2018 change do you blame the most for the Jaguars' disappointing season? With 13%, new uniforms. With 20%, the stadium name change. With 23%, three September home games. And with 44%, the freaking dog park. That's right. I mean, obviously. It's just science. Yeah. My, my only question to all that is, why would you vote for anything else? That, How could you possibly vote for well, anything else? Some people else? may have hated the uniforms, yeah. and some people may have hated the TIAA bank. Yeah. Actually, I have to say my bright spot for the year, uh, besides Calais Campbell's play, Josh Lambeau's play, is the uniforms. I really I really started to like those uniforms a lot. I like the all whites. I like the all whites. I all like whites the all blacks. Good. And I like yeah. the white top black pants. Yeah. They're just kind of boring for me. I'm a flashy guy. I like how James asks a question and then answers the opposite of it. That's right. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that was correct. Well, it was because of the, the poll there, brought there it was up. I wasn't tie planning on it, but I heard the uniform change. I mean, it was, it was not correct. Is that the game you also had to wait like 10 minutes to even get into the area? Uh, with these dog probably caters? that game. Yeah. yeah. It was probably that game. I saw the dog park for the first time, the first preseason game. Because to get to where our seats are, you have to walk by where the dog park is. And I actually did a double take. It was like, okay, they must be doing construction there. And then I looked again, I was like, that's where the dog park is. And I should have known at that moment that the season was over. Um, yeah. It, it Dead absolutely, giveaway. Oh, man. I mean. What's the easiest way to burn a chain fence? <laughs> that's that's fire. the next, I that's the next yeah, I mean, it's, Twitter it's, question right there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Blow what chemicals torch? do you need? <laughs> I don't know. What else has been the most disappointing thing for you all personally this year? I think mine would tie into the same game. That game, we looked phenomenal. Blake mm -hmm. looked awesome. Our 
offensive coordinator, the play call, everything was sharp, crisp. Like it, we looked unbelievable. And I'm like, yes, it's happening. Like we're continuing last season. They're making that leap. And then it was just straight down from there. So that, that win was honestly like my worst part of the year because I got so excited, so amped, so pumped for the season. And then it was just nothing but crap after that. It's hard to believe that we started the season three and one. I know. I mean, like yeah, so it does three and one. And we were mad that we weren't four and oh. Yeah, I'm, there's unfortunately there's a lot of disappointing parts of the season, but for me, I think the real first one, the one I got really concerned about was that first Tennessee loss, and then it got coupled with the second one to them as well. But I mean, just losing to them again was just like, how is this possible? We thought this was going to be our Super Bowl run year, and we still can't beat the Titans, and that one. I, there's probably other disappointing moments, but that one was the one I was the most mad and frustrated with as well. I would say for me, obviously the dog park is number one, but Jason stole my thunder there big time. Uh, but I, I don't blame him. The other thing is, I'm going to say Telvin Smith is the most disappointing. And then, you know, two weeks ago, he gets the game clinching pick six points to the guy draws a penalty and is not remorseful in any way after the game is over. You know, he's basically, he's like, yeah, I'm I'm almost sounding like he would do it again, you know, given the opportunity. So I I thought Telvin was supposed to be a better leader than he showed this year. And I think that caused a lot of ripple effects in the locker room. Joey made the point several times this year that maybe losing pause was a way bigger deal than we gave it credit. And I think he's right because I think Paz probably kept Telvin in check a lot. And I, we, we saw what happened when he wasn't there. And it was very disappointing to me because I loved Telvin. But at this point, I don't know. I'm not sure if he's going to be long for Jacksonville or not. There's a lot of talks of him being a pretty toxic in the locker room too now. Yeah. That's towards the end of the season. So it's, it's a bad situation right now. I mean, he's put himself in a bad situation. He's basically the same player as Miles Jack and – Knowledge Jack plays as good and isn't as big of a headache. So. And neither one of them did all that great this year either. So, Did you know Miles Jack finished the season as just one of three defensive players in the NFL to play in 100% of the snaps? Yeah. yeah. My kind of guy. Yep. Coming from the guy we had the biggest injury concerns about when he was drafted. Playing that's true. 100% of the we snaps. We got him that's for insane. a steal because of that. So yeah. That's huge. Okay, so I think now that we've kind of all voiced our frustrations personally, let's get to the news of the week, um, which is Khan's statement that came out immediately after the game, probably drafted before the game, um, if not a a couple weeks before the game, uh, that said Marone, Caldwell, and Coughlin all coming back. But rather than just talking about it, let's let's get to some Twitter questions about that specific topic. Jason, you have any you want to read for us? Yes, this one's from Jolly Heather and... She is at, hey, it's Heather, 17. Hey. All right. Uh, She says, I really don't understand how we can keep Dave Caldwell after everything he has done to absolutely ruin this team's roster. Can someone please give me a single good reason for keeping him? I think it's, uh, I mean, we've all kind of hinted at it this entire season. I think it's, we know definitively now that this is Tom Coughlin's team and only his team. And it doesn't matter who we have in that spot. And it's easier just to have some guy that just has to sit there and let Tom Coughlin run it. And he's just kind of a, he goes out there and takes a beating in the press conference if he needs to. And that's kind of it. Yeah. I'm dead on. I mean, I think at this point he's a, he's a puppet and Hey, you know, DC go, go order the food for the press press conference. You know, Tom Coughlin's calling it all, all the shots at this point. I think it's evident. Uh, To answer your question directly, Heather, I would say, no, I cannot give, a single reason why Dave Caldwell should be here because you're right. He has decimated this roster with terrible drafting. I mean, we're looking at the possibility when we can get to it later. If Fournette is traded or let go or whatever this season, we're talking about Jokel, Bortles, Fowler, and then Fournette, all top four picks in, 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 in sooner. All right. Being off this team by a general manager, forget what he's done in the later rounds, which is is more hit or miss than you know a lot of people want to give him credit for being a great late round he, he's okay he's not that great it's not as great as we think if you really look at some of his picks besides being a puppet i think also what it boils down to is shod khan as a bottom line guy and he made money on the team last year and he said why rock the boat let's just keep everybody and try it for one more year and 
go ahead and hit this thing in the bud immediately before that we get too deep into the off season. I, I said it earlier. I think this decision was made well before this. You know, the the last week of the season, um, based on how quickly the statement came out. I mean, it was the the whist, final whistle had hardly blown when it was on Twitter. So, listen, this was made earlier in the season that all three of these guys were going to come back. You can make a case for called uh, for Marone. You can make a case for Coughlin. I'm not saying that that those would be strong cases for them coming back, but in my opinion, you cannot make a case for Dave Caldwell being back as interim manager other than what we have what Robert and Joey have just said that he's a puppet and he's just there to do all the annoying stuff that Coughlin doesn't want to do while Coughlin actually runs the team. And that's the thing. I mean, everybody wants him gone. Everybody thinks he's done. I, you can't find anybody that's going to defend him, right? No, I no. mean, you ask anybody, they think he sucks. So, I mean, the only reason is, is that that's a tough position to fill, first of all. Second of all, are you going to fill that position with somebody who's going to come in and try to be the alpha male and butt heads with, you know, Coughlin? No. I mean, you're going to say, hey, here's what you're doing. This is all you're doing. You're not making any decisions anymore. Coughlin is, but you got the title, and that's it. It's easy. Yeah, I mean, I think Con probably... Went to Tom Coughlin and said, hey, what do you want to do about Caldwell? And he said, let's keep him. I think that's the level that Coughlin is running this team yeah. to that point. I don't think he's, I mean, the, the general manager position isn't what it used to be. It used to be like the GM was the GM. Like he did the drafting, the scouting. He was in charge of all that. Nowadays, look at the Oakland Raiders. I mean, they got Mike Mayock as their GM now. He's not making any decisions. He's just evaluating talent for John Gruden. And John Gruden is going to, is the GM. Same thing here in Jacksonville. Caldwell's evaluating talent. Coughlin is drafting them. And I don't think Dave Caldwell is that bad at evaluating talent. He's had a good track record of evaluating talent back to Atlanta. He like his late round picks. He's hit on some people. I, I don't think he's um, as bad as people think. But I mean, if you watch the, the scouting combine, Coughlin is sitting at the 40 yard, 40 yard dash on the second row with a stopwatch timing the offensive lineman. That's how you know Coughlin is running this team. Why do you think Caldwell isn't as, isn't that bad? I mean, I I disagree. I think he's terrible. When you when you have a, a second overall pick, a third overall pick, a third overall pick, and a fourth overall pick in your first what is it six years he's been on the team, and they all are going to be off the team possibly. You know, in theory, we, we we would all I think agree that Bortles is probably gone. Fournette, whether he's back or not, it has not been a successful two year campaign, especially this year. I mean, those are the those are the picks that you have to at least go fifty fifty on, you know. And he's he's not doing well at all. And then you know you say, well, later on you got Allen Robinson in the second round, okay, got him, and he's gone. You extended Bortles to a uh, you know, or you ex- extended Bortles' contract. You hired Gus Bradley, extended his. Both of them gone now, by the way. Uh, it's it just. You know, you have the you have the lenders. You have, I, I guess, you could say Mark Easley in the second round was a good pick. Miles Jack, uh, you know, it, these are they're they're good, but they're not you know gems. You know, they're not diamonds in the rough. So I, I don't know. I, I just think, what has he really done that's so outstanding that he deserves to come back? I mean, his his record. What is it? He's got 26 wins or something like that in his in his time here. It's awful. But if you would, if we would have asked this question, how good is this roster a year ago? We would have said this is one of the most talented rosters in the NFL. We would have all argued that there's more talent on this team than you than you could argue any other team. But isn't most of that from free agency though? Maybe which he has a hand in, yeah, and I'll give you that. But we, there was also stuff last year that winning hid that yeah. they didn't have this year. That yeah. character issues that are coming out that that we we saw as fans not not privy to the behind the scenes stuff we saw on the field happen we we all know that there was things going on if you paid any attention to the jags this year and all the work everything that's coming out now is saying that that all existed last year but the difference is they were winning so it didn't matter as much so you have to look to the general manager or whoever is in charge whether it's caldwell or him and say yeah they might be good but you're you've now created a toxic locker room which 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 he has a hand in as well joey you're kind of Shaking your head a little bit. What do you think? Because I don't think anybody thinks he should deserves the chance to come back. I think it's just a situation, and it is what it is. I think Coughlin's old. Coughlin wants to do what he wants to do, and he gets to pick that now because of who he is. And Caldwell's going to do the stuff he doesn't want to do. So it's a good fit. And and then you look at somebody like Ngakwe. I mean, that was a you talk about diamond in the rough. Yeah, that was a heck of a pick. You bring in Clayus Campbell in free agency. Talk about the best player on our team, maybe. I mean. 
you can't knock that. So he has done some good stuff if you want to make an argument for him, but I don't think he deserves to come back. Yeah, but at the same time, every GM in the entire NFL hits on late round picks every now and then. True. How many of our how many of our late round picks have actually been true diamonds in the rough? I I'll mean, tell you, third Ga- round, Ronnie Harrison. Third round, not fourth, proven. Ronnie Ooh. Harrison, he's going to be good. Yeah, he's going to be a stud. I think. Fourth round, 2017, D.D. Westbrook. Not proven. Fourth he's going to be a round. second. He's a fourth rounder though. 2016, Miles Jack, second round. Yannick Ngakwe, third round. 2015, A.J. Can, third round. Eh. We're cutting him. Come on, come on Jason. Come on. <laughs> you don't None even of, believe that. All one. those guys right. had down years right. this year. Right. Every one he of those started, guys. Though. Okay, he started saying the names. Right. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man, <laughs> <laughs> 2014. 2014. Allen Robinson, late second. Gone. Round. Gone. But still good. Good. No, not he's, not, he's not doing that great at Chicago it's not, either. It's not his fault though. Oh, it's his general what? manager. But it's not his fault. He's gone. But it's he's not doing great at Chicago either. He still drafted him. Okay. Linder, third round. Colvin, fourth round. Telvin Smith, fifth round. Luke Buenko is still in the league. <laughs> Sixth round. Like, oh, come on. All those guys, all those guys have had one good year. He's not a good late drafter, though. You cannot say he's not a good late drafter. All those guys Luke, have had one or two good years. That's no. it. And then they're gone. Okay, wait a second. Great. Remind me again. Who did they get in the sixth round this year? What's that guy's name? I can't remember. He was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he had a quick release. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so we, we released him quick. But yeah. That's, that's sixth round. I'm saying you shouldn't hit value in that round. I don't. I don't know. You could argue that he doesn't draft well in the first round. I'll give you that. A lot of teams miss on the first round players. We've seen the Browns. We've seen the Raiders. We've seen teams like that that have been bad for a while. They consistently miss in the first round, just like we do. It's hard. Like it's not easy. That's why these teams that are dynasties like. The Patriots, everyone they draft in the first round, even in the 20s and 30s, they plays in the league forever. It, evaluating talent is there's an elite level, then I think there's everyone else. So I, let, okay, let's just let's just say for argument's sake that yes, he is a good late round drafter. The bottom line is he still drafted Blake Bortles and let Patrick Mahomes go, Deshaun Watson go, Lamar Jackson go. But do you think which, those guys would have been good in a, with our offense? I think Deshaun Watson will be would be good anywhere. Patrick Mahomes, I think he is a product of the system, but I also think he's special. Lamar Jackson is the only one of those three that I listed uh, that I think the jury still needs to be out on just because the track record of mobile quarterbacks like him are not good in the NFL. But I also would say this, that the NFL is changing and evolving, and I believe that that type of quarterback is going to have better longevity in the NFL now than it did even five years ago. I have to argue with this one because I was a big Lamar Jackson fan in the draft. You can't tell me that if we were bringing Lamar Jackson in to replace Blake Bortles that we would not have finished the season much better. Oh, I agree 100%. I mean, we might not have gone, we lost nine in a row, whatever No, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm only saying that I would be worried about him going forward just sure, for durability. Absolutely. That's, oh, yeah. that's long, my only Long thing. term, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he might be four or five years in the league and yeah. maybe out, but... No, I mean, look, but look at where those guys went, man. Deshaun Watson went to Bill O'Brien. That dude's like a quarterback whisper. Patrick Mahomes went to Andy Reid. That dude's a quarterback whisper. Lamar Jackson, I'm not sold on Lamar Jackson yet. Okay, that's John Harbaugh teams have a track record of uh, popping up and then not being good. Dude, he's like five and one as a starter and put his team in the playoffs. That means nothing to me. <laughs> five, a six game sample size. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be bad, but I'm just saying I still like I'm with James. Jury's still out on Lamar Jackson. So you would have rather have. Ha- I don't think Lamar Jackson would have been good here because we have the offensive line in Baltimore is way better than ours. Okay, the so, receivers actually but, catch the ball. They get open. Okay, they're running another day. Play. We're thing, talking though. his draft pick. So Taven Bryan was a better pick than Lamar Jackson mm. this year. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe in the future. Maybe. Because okay. Lamar Jackson's durability could be questioned. We see quarterbacks do this all the time. They come in mobile, tear the league up for a year, and then they, they get caught up with him in their second year. Happens all the time. If, if Caldwell had drafted Bortles and said, okay, you know what? He's not the guy two years ago, and they had, they had gone after someone else, I would be okay with that. But he didn't. He signed him to an extension, and we passed on several would-be quarterbacks that the Jags could have taken. And a lot of them have come come out and played really well or, or better than Bortles certainly has. And that is always what is going to set a franchise back. It doesn't matter what you do in the later rounds if you don't get your guy. And not only did he not get his guy, but he doubled down on him. And, and I mean, time will tell how, much, how long it's going to cost us for that huge mistake. Now, that huge mistake, Okay. And so we'll see, you know, and, and I get, you know, you're saying, you know, Deshaun Watson goes to Bill O'Brien, this guy goes, well, maybe, maybe then 
you need to you need to get better coaches in here as well which again goes to dave caldwell all of this points to him and if it doesn't point to him look we're talking about coughlin's running this team now He's 0 for 2 as well in terms of the first round. You're talking about Leonard Fournette and then Taven Bryan. You know, and, and I don't know if we want to get into the Leonard Fournette thing now or we'll wait, but it's not looking good is all I'll say. So I don't know. We'll see. But but again, going back to the original question, uh, I, I agree 100%, and I'll say it all offseason. Caldwell, he, he should be gone. I, I In what other business do you have a tracker like a him and you stay? You, it's almost like I kind of admire him and respect him. You know, like, how is this guy keeping his job? It's amazing. <laughs> like I said earlier, it is what it is at this point. That's why he's there. And he doesn't deserve to be there. I don't think anybody can question that. All right. Next Twitter question. <laughs> this is from uh, Jason and he's at rat HCP. He's a burner account for you. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I would not use my real name. I don't burner account. Come on. Oh, or would <laughs> you? <laughs> he says, I'm okay with all of them staying. Caldwell has done a great job finding talent deep in the draft. His only bad pick has been Bortles. I don't think that this season is their fault. With Bortles at quarterback and all the injuries to the O-line, no one could have survived this. You know what they could have done? They could have gotten a number or drafted uh, a wide receiver early on or a couple of them or gone just after offense all, all draft. Instead, we got a defensive end who I know some of y'all disagree. I don't think he's ever going to do anything in the NFL. He has not proved a bit to me that he is going to be good. He doesn't even get QB pressures. I mean, he yes, he has he has a ton of talent. He's strong. Everyone agrees with that, but he's doing the same thing he did at Florida. He can't get to the quarterback. And then on top of that, this last few games of the season, we haven't even got to see him out there and actually really playing. We're letting Malik Jackson, who we're going to trade, just go ahead and just let him show out for a job for next year instead of playing and letting the guys that we have next year getting reps. I don't think they have faith in this guy. I mean, you can't argue that. I mean, I, I agree about the Taven Bryan. That's a different discussion, I think. But as far as the question goes, I mean, what was the question? Again? The question was, Sorry. Uh, his, it was more of a comment. And it, what do you think about his opinion that with Bortles at quarterback and all the injuries to the O line, no one could have survived this. Oh, I don't know. Like no going. coach, GM could have had a good year with all of what happened. Well, the only thing coming out of this season that like gives me some hope that it is injury, the reason we were so bad was the fact that we lost six games by less than a touchdown. I mean, you talk about last year, some balls bouncing our way, some calls going our way, some plays going our ways. Six games by less than a touchdown, that shows you have something. Yeah, but at the same time, that's the NFL. I mean, how often do you see point spreads that are beyond a touchdown? Well, look at Arizona. Well, that's why that coach got fired. I mean, he had the worst loss differential in you know football history. So, yeah. I mean, it's not that situation. Done. I mean, yeah. you don't see one and done very often. No, you don't. And yeah, what was our highest point spread this year? I think it was like five or six that we were favored. No, or that, I mean going against us. I mean, no, we were. Uh, we were. It's been Dallas, close. Dallas crushed us. No, 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 no. I'm saying what they, uh, the going initial spread the was. Oh, sure, sure. Gotcha, coming gotcha. Up, yeah. well, coming out. Good defense. Defense will always mm -hmm. keep you in games. Yeah. I mean, okay. I understand. The injuries obviously played a huge part in, in this season. No one's arguing that. But what concerns me is there was never a point with Doug Marone this year where you looked at him and thought, this guy's got the team under control. Like they are, they are bought into whatever he is selling. He didn't look like he was the leader of the team ever. He, he was, it was almost like his, the way he coached was this passive aggressive manner. And he, he did, he lost control. And I'm not saying that they should, I'm not saying they should get rid of him this year. I actually think they should bring him back, but it, it, he, he better change because he can't keep doing this and just, you know, closing his eyes to, not, to what is really going on. He's, he's got to step up and, you know, have some discipline. Ron, we talked about Ronnie Harrison earlier as a, as a great draft pick. He is. He's going to be a solid player. But he should have benched him in that game when he went and got that flag for trash talking when Gibson's right there as well. And he didn't do anything. I mean, this is a rookie. Like, he has no clout whatsoever, and Marone just let it go. So he needs to figure out how to get this team back, and it's it's got to be more than just dumping the bad apples. I mean, how about trying to coach the bad apples? 
because some of these bad apples are really talented, and it's going to be a shame to see them go if, if that's the reason, is because you didn't deal with it when you should have. So I don't, I don't know if that's off track to what was being asked, but somehow I, I thought of it, and I went for it. <laughs> Well, Brad Harvin has a comment. He's at the rundown underscore BH. He says, I'm still reeling that Caldwell is still here. Absolutely shocked. He is linked to Blake and should be treated as such. So we, we have different opinions on Twitter about people who feel different ways about Caldwell and him staying, but, you know, time will tell. Like yeah. I said, we're a year removed from thinking this is the best team on earth, you know? So I understand them not blowing it up just yet. No, it, no. Yeah, it, but that's also the the scary and hard part for me right now is that next year we have a hard schedule against teams that typically beat us. You never know us. what your schedule is going to be until the season starts. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm just talking the teams we're going to be playing next yeah, year. I know, but you never know who's going to be good and who's going to be bad okay. before the season because well, you never I – mean, no one knew the Browns were going to be good this year or, you know. So. Okay, that's fair. Well, then on top of that, we have Andrew Luck coming back for the Colts looking like he's going to be – just like he was before he was hurt. Yeah, in the playoffs. We have the Houston coming back. Our playoff, run, just to get into the playoffs, is going to be so difficult for us next year, just within our own division. That's I the mean, NFL. I mean, you got to beat good teams every week in the NFL. I mean, you rarely get cupcakes that you can just roll over. I I my I guess my point is we our offense has to get incredibly better. We can't we we can't have what they've been saying this quarterback managing thing and letting our defense do it. It's not going to work. It's never going to work. We have to get an offense and and start focusing strictly on that and getting points on the board. We're not sneaking up on anybody with our defense anymore. I mean, I think we got away with that 2 years ago to some extent and it ain't happening. They know what our weaknesses are. If we don't fix those, I mean, it's going to be another year like this year. I feel weird about next year in terms of my expectations because I don't think we, we've said it on here before uh, that this is a team that you blow up and start over like not even close but at the same time I don't know I mean injuries were just so in, insane this year for the team it's hard to say are there are there holes all over the place that need to be filled or if we just get healthy will that plug the holes so you know, I, I don't know, but I, I do agree with Robert that they need to, I mean, I think we all would agree that they need to be offensive minded to this off season and whether that's signing a free agent quarterback or, you know, moving up in the draft and trying to get one that way. But I don't know. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a weird feeling right now because they, they could be good, but they, I mean, I look, their home games and the non-divisional games as the chiefs, the saints. I mean, those are, it's, and then on top of that, then you have your do have your three divisional games. Tennessee owns us. You got the Colts and the and the Texans. I mean, that's that's five games right there at home of the seven that they play in Jacksonville. That's that's tough. I mean, right now that's tough. If 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 Drew Brees comes back next year, you know, I don't know. We'll see. So, but like I, I agree with 100 percent with what Jason said as well. Though you just never know. You you never know what a team is going to be like from year to year. Case in point, the Jacksonville Jack, Jaguars. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But were we were we all let's be honest, were we all confident going to this year with our offense? I was extremely confident. Yeah, I thought our O line was gonna beast on people. We're just gonna run the ball for two hundred yards on everybody. Yeah. I thought um, we were gonna make the leap from last year and just do better than we did last year, which was enough last year. So yeah, I was happy with it. Right. This is the last comment about the the GM and everyone. This is from the Teal Zone and he or she is at the underscore teal underscore zone. And they say Keeping them was logical because A, Khan had to know a bunch of the other teams were firing theirs, B, not a long list of better candidates, and C, they need a quarterback and teams fail when a whole new staff has to find a guy in a short span while trying to mesh from the GM down. Good points. I, I do. I agree with those in terms of Marone. That's why I think they should keep Marone because if there, listen, there's eight teams right now that are looking for a head coach. Eight. That's a quarter of the league. And the names that are being thrown out there are not super impressive. You have Mike McCarthy, who is a, is a solid coach, accomplished coach. But he's, he, listen, if the Jags were looking for a head coach, he, he's not coming here. No. He's, he's going to the Jets. He's going to the Browns. Uh, somewhere, you know, 
where that has an uh, upcoming quarterback, you know, th- then you have the Packers as well. who are looking for a quarterback. They have a, they have a pretty good, I mean, they were looking for a coach. They have a pretty good quarterback there. So in, in terms of, you know, if, for all those people that are, that are beating the drum on, we should have fired Marone. We should fire Marone. Well, okay. Who are you going to bring in? So that is a, that is a very good point. I, I stand by the fact that I still think Caldwell should be gone. I, th- I think you can make that work. There's only there's only so many GM openings in the league, and if someone wants it, they'll come in and make it work with the head coach. But um, maybe it's not that attractive with with Coughlin here because no one does want to be a puppet. But with, with Marone, for sure, I agree. I agree with with what uh, that uh, person said. Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily think that we should keep Maroon, but like you're saying, I mean, there's really nobody that I think we're going to get that's going to do much better than him. Plus, if you look at on the side that, I mean, he had one really solid year where we got to the AFC Championship game, and then we talked about all the injuries, so it's like, I'm willing to give him one more year in the for that sense. Uh, plus, I mean, if we gave Dave Caldwell all the years that we gave him with consistent losing seasons... I can give this guy a third year. Look at Gus Bradley, man. I mean, like no, I'm sorry. Death. I'm sorry. I meant yeah. to say Gus Bradley. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You've got to give the guy another chance. And like James said, I mean, who would want to come here that would be better? Nobody. Yeah. So that Chargers defense is looking pretty nasty. Yeah. He's a great defensive James. James. He's a, James. Yeah. Gus is a great defensive coordinator, yeah, he is. but he's not a good head coach. I mean, come on. I like Marone. I'm, I'm, I, I do. I, do I like yeah. Marone a lot. He just, he just needs to get the locker room under control. I'm just not sold that, like we talked, everyone's talked about how like hard-nosed coach he is and everything, but with how this, this season's gone, like I don't really know how, I mean, he seems like he just lets things go. Like he looks like he has the face for it, but I mean, how much of a disciplinarian is this guy if all this stuff is constantly happening on the team? I think he, he was it. two years ago, and I think he let off this year and let his coaches underneath him handle things and trusted them to do what they were supposed to do. Okay. He's already set the tone for next year. I mean, with that statement that he made about, Hey, you got to be here and you got to be coachable. Like the number one thing he's already said that that means show up for preseason, show up for everything you've got to and you be coachable. So I mean, he's already set that tone. All right. Last coaching question. Then we're going to move on to Leonard Fournette. Okay. This is from Shea Jacobs and he's at S Jacobs underscore 11. He says, what offensive coordinator do you guys envision getting the job? I feel like given the situation, it will be tough to lure a good offensive coordinator with options that also has to coach with Marone's philosophy of run first. Also, if everything doesn't start or finish well in 2019, everyone could be gone. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I like this one. I mean, and I don't think we could get him necessarily, but I mean, you have like a dirt cutter. I mean, he's been here before, but I mean, he he's offensive minded. He He might be able to do something with us. I mean... I don't think Cotter possibly. I don't think Cutter is going to. I have a gut feeling someone's going to hire him as a head coach. I mean, maybe you think head coach, yeah. not just offensive quarter. Yeah, okay. I think so. Just because he has a lot of pedigree. And those are the yeah. guys that tend to get the head coaching jobs. There's Cotter too. Um, I'm not really, I'm not a huge fan of him, but. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, Jim Bob Cooter. Yeah. Cooter. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I don't think he's going to come to, I think he's going to get a higher profile job than Jacksonville. I think he'll be with like, Cleveland or he'll be somewhere uh, Green Bay he'll be somewhere higher profile than us I would look depending on what they do in the draft let's just say they draft a quarterback I think what they're going to do is look for a quarterback's coach that has had a lot of success with with young quarterbacks and bring them in as or him in as the offensive coordinator um Someone that I don't think I don't think there's going to be a lateral move from an one guy that's an offensive coordinator somewhere to come over here uh Former, you know, a fired head coach, possibly, but I think I, I would hope it'd be someone young. I hope they skew young, just because that's just what I prefer right now. <laughs> so, Personally, I'm ready so for they, young the Jaguars did release that they interviewed Daryl Bevel today, and mm-hmm. he's the former offensive coordinator for the Seahawks, and he was there from 2011 to 2017. So not this last year, but he was on that Super Bowl winning. He was a coach on the Super Bowl winning team. Um, he's, he's, he's like, also the coach on the Super Bowl losing team who did not have uh, yeah. beast mode run it on that last play. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, and he's 48, so he's not. He's pretty young still. Yeah. And then another guy that people think was interviewed uh, was what's his name from the Giants, Mac uh, McAdoo. McAdoo. Yeah, McAdoo. So if those those two guys do anything for you, those are probably the two guys that have been interviewed first. I mean, McAdoo's a Coughlin guy. Uh, I like Bevel. I mean, he, he worked with Russell Wilson, so I, I like that. 
but I I can't sit here and say I know a ton about them. I know the name. That's about it. I mean, Giants. I mean, they haven't really done a, a whole lot in the last few years, anyways. So, I mean, uh, I mean, that's. I mean, but those guys, they can have a bad run of it at one place and then come in and do a good job somewhere else. I mean, I I understand the young guy thing. In some ways, I kind of want to tried and tested guy right now coming in and running this kind of this just mess right now I feel like I think we have the pieces but I want a guy that has a system that's going to come in and like just kind of run the show not a kind of experimental thing there's rumors Charlie Weiss wants to come back and coach oh man oh. <laughs> here's some guys that we I, we I don't think we'll get but I would love it but I don't think we're going to get them is yeah. Urban Meyer on that list Urban Meyer is not on this list no, I know. That was, that's going pretty far there hmm. um, this is uh, Steve Wilkes former Arizona coach I would love to see him here. Doubt it. Steve Sarkeesian, former Falcons oh, offensive coordinator. Yeah. Would love to see him. Probably won't get him. And the last one that no one's talking about, so I'm going to take credit for this. If we hire him, Major Applewhite, hmm. coach uh, at Houston, who was just fired. I like that. He is a good offensive coordinator. He was offensive coordinator at Texas. He's a young guy. He's a, he's a you know, air raid guy. Uh, West Coast offense, not air raid, sorry. But, you know, when you think of it, it would be like an air mm-hmm. raid. But uh, he's he's a guy who... Those are guys I would love to have, but if I'm being honest, I think we're going to end up with McAdoo. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Plus, his first name's Major. Major. That's got to mean something. Yeah. And he's in a little Wayne song. There you go. It's my extent of Office of Coordinator Knowledge. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Joey's the big rap fan here. So he is. I figured he would. <laughs> Easy E. <Yeah>. Joey J. <laughs> All right. So you're ready to move on to Fournette? You got anything else about Office Coordinator? No, that's, that's about it. Are you yeah. talking about Fournette tonight? <laughs> oh. What do you think? Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on this. Do you think that if Marone brings in a new Office Coordinator, he's going to let them have full control? Or do you think he's going to kind of be calling the shots as the head coach? I, I want to say he's going to give the guy full control, whoever he brings in. I think it does a couple of things. I mean, even though. He he constantly takes all blame on himself. It's also, I mean, they cut the offensive coordinator. I mean, so twice. So I don't know. I I think he lets, I don't think he runs the offense. I don't see him as the guy that runs the offense. I don't think he runs the offense, but his butt's on the line. He knows that. So I think he's going to pull those reins in. He's going to have a lot more control, a lot more micromanaging of maybe the day-to-day, the practice stuff, maybe not the play calls during the game. But I think everything else he's definitely going to be involved in. Yeah, I think he's going to say this is the philosophy of this team. I want it to be a balanced attack. We're going to run the ball this many times. We're going to throw the ball this many times, blah, blah, blah. Go for it. Do it. It probably all depends on the guy, too. I mean, if he gets who he wants he might give him some more control if he gets Joe Schmo because it's all he could get. I mean, that's true. All right, so the looming question is with our boy Leonard Fournette, mm-hmm. who was drafted just two years ago. And now he went from promising best player on the offense, perhaps. Team captain. Team captain. To now someone whose future is up in the air. So this question is from Michael Harrison, and he's, at loves Cougars. <laughs> and he says, I love that handle. Does the removal of Lenny's guarantees mean what I think it means? Are we trading him or just proving a point that he needs to mature? Are Carlos Hyde and Dave Williams the future backs here? Would it be crazy to trade? Oh, let's not get there yet. Okay. Let's just say, <laughs> let's just end it there. Okay. He had a, he had a threefold yeah, this, the, question. Uh-oh. His next question is good. I want to ask you, but it has nothing to do with Fournette. So. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll put a pin we'll, in that yeah, one. We'll <sighs> Man, it's a great, it's a head scratcher for me, for sure. All signs point to Fournette is out of here. But it's just, it's hard to fathom that a guy that was picked fourth overall two years ago had a really promising rookie year and obviously very down second year. They would ship him out. I mean, I haven't heard all the stories and I, I don't think, any of us ever will hear all the stories that must have happened for the team to be that frustrated with him, for him to be that much of a cancer in the locker room, for him to be that immature, to just get rid of him after two years. I mean, we're talking about bringing Marone and have Collins back after six. I mean, you're, you're going to let a, a running back be gone after two years? I mean, he must have done some major apple white stuff to... <laughs> Sorry, to do thank you, thank you. Um, to make that a reality, but the body language that he showed on the sidelines, on the bench against the Texans, 
Coughlin coming out and making the statement he made about him being selfish and unprofessional. Then the whole deal with, you know, taking back the guaranteed money out of his contract. I mean, it's, it's regardless of what happens, there's a needs to, if he does stay with the Jags, there has to be some major, uh, you know, damage control with that relationship. If they can get in touch with a team like the 49ers or, you know, a team ahead of them in the draft, if they're serious about drafting a quarterback like Haskins and they can package Fournette in that deal to move up in the draft, maybe that makes it more of a reality. I don't know, but it's – I'm sitting here and I'm just shocked that, that I believe it is as a real as possibility as it could be. I mean, I kind of beat the Leonard Fournette to death two weeks ago, and I, I kind of did that as a bold statement because he, he's pissed me off. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I can't stand to have a guy like that on our team, but he is very talented. And at this point, I don't think we trade him uh, or I don't think we, we, we let go of him unless, like you said, it's trade bait to move up and get whoever we want higher in the draft. I think, and the reason I think that is them coming out and saying that they cut his guarantees. That is a straight up, I'm a dad, this is my child, I'm punishing him and showing him that, hey, if you don't straighten up, do what you're supposed to do, you're gone. You're you're not that special. And the fact that actually Marone was the one that came out and confirmed that, he's never done that. He's never been the guy who's come in and talked about contracts, talked about anything. That's not his MO. But he specifically came out and said, yes, we canceled his guarantees. I think it's a bold statement. Yeah, I, I earlier on in the season, I, I, I mentioned and I was concerned going into next year that we'd almost have to look at cutting them just strictly off of injuries alone. But at this point, I am so mad at Leonard Fournette that I hate the baby thing of I'm going to sit, I'm not going to play kind of deal. And even if he did that last year, you're making millions of dollars and you're going to act that way out of spite. I want to pay him to play next year. And if he wants to sit out the entire season and ruin the rest of his career by doing that, because who wants to pick up a guy that quit on a team that's not going to play next season. If we keep him, and has an injury problem, I want him to either figure it out and play out next year or just let him sit there. Let him. I mean, that guy's made me so mad between the injuries. Now all the talk about him not showing up on time for, for physical therapy appointments, whatever it is. I mean, I don't I don't want to award this guy the opportunity to go go somewhere else, get paid tons of money and potentially actually have a huge year yet next year. I, I don't want to see that happen no matter what. Well, here's why I stand on it. And I understand all y'all's points. <clears throat> but the bottom line is, for me, if Leonard Fournette was running behind a competent offensive line, I think even in the short amount of games he played, he would have had amazing numbers. Like, I don't think we're factoring in how terrible the offensive line was. Like, I don't think we're thinking about that in, in terms of Leonard Fournette. Marone said that, you know, he was he was talking about probably yelled in about the guy who didn't go in when he was supposed to play and Fournette being a bad teammate sitting there on the bench. I mean, we saw the cameras of them just sitting there with the stoic look on their face. But can you blame Yeldon for not playing in that game? He's a game away from free agency. One game away from free agency. The team has activated him, inactivated him all season long. He's going to make some money this offseason. He could get hurt in this game. And then they're asking him to go out there in a meaningless game to run behind the most ragtag offensive line anyone's ever seen I don't before. blame him at all. He, I would have he, taken he, the fine, too. He played, Find me. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting paid this offseason. No, he played hard for us this year. Yeah, exactly. No problem with him whatsoever. Yeah. So, but Fournette, I do. He's doing the same thing. But he wasn't even dressed. He wasn't going to play. So he's just sitting there with his boy. I mean, I, I, I just don't understand, like... We're asking the players to give it their all and to be a team player and to put it all out on the line. And the front office is putting crap players on the field okay, in so, front of them. But the, so the first, it's, it's the not fair. The first won- game of the season, would you say our offensive line sucked? The first game of the season, no. I thought it was okay, pretty so, good. So in his half, he was nine carries for 41 yards. That's pretty good. What? what? Is that not good? It's less than... That's <sighs> average. It's average. What? We eight, drafted 80 about, yards in a game for an elite running back? Are you kidding me? Nine carries for 41 yards is more than four. That's four and a half yards per carry. He's been averaging 3.9 or less, though. Okay, so you want to make that argument. That's fine, but he was doing good before he got hurt. Uh, I expect more out of him. You expect more than 4.5 yards per carry. What do you, who do you, what do you want out there? 
Emma Smith? Emma Smith's retired. Uh, I want a fourth round draft pick. Fred Taylor? This just in. Fred Taylor's not walking through that door. Too. Reese Jones Drew? He's retired too. I mean, I wish we had these guys, but. I mean, what do, you, what do you want to do? If your expectations are that low for an elite running back, then okay. The, listen, I, I mean, you can't argue that Fournette is not a talented running back. He he is. I I believe when when there is an offensive line, I, he's the pro, That's what I'm saying. Like there must be some serious stuff going on behind the scenes for it to, for it to have gotten this far. I mean, like like Joe, you were saying earlier, the whole taking away the guaranteed money is like a. It's it's like they're putting him in timeout. No, like I mean, which tried, is which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's like they've tried it's, everything and they have, they have nothing else left. It's to try. ridiculous. This is not a a talent issue. In, in my opinion, this is a character issue. This is a, are you going to be a professional? Are you going to, are you going to show up on time when you are hurt, which is happening a lot with him? Are you going to show up on time to rehab? Or are you going to be late to that all the time? Are you going to be lazy about that? You know, are you going to, are you going to be on time to team meetings? Are you always going to be a headache that we have to deal with? And look, the thing about running backs that Leonard Fournette needs to know is they are replaceable. You know, they're not they're It's it's a position that is probably one of the most expendable ones in the league. And so I think that's probably what they're looking at. I, I don't think this is about can he produce because Leonard Fournette can produce. That's probably where the frustration comes from. But the, the fact that he gained 10 pounds during the season, you know, that he, he gets a hamstring injury, which happens. OK, I get that. But then you don't you don't come to your rehab uh, sessions on time. You know, you. You're, you're voted a team captain or however he became a team captain. He behaved the way you did. You know, it's just, it, to me, this reeks of of some serious off-field issues that are going on that this team is fed up with him about. And so the question it, to me isn't, is he is he good? It's, is he a professional? And how much do they want, how, what is, what is the difference in the headache that they get from him versus what he does for them on the field? Yeah, I, I mean, think I think that's the question that they're that they're trying to figure out this offseason. Absolutely. I think they're honestly questioning whether he is capable of that maturity level at this point. I mean, I think the things that they're 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 doing are showing that like, man, we don't know what to do. We don't know if this guy can even do that. I don't, I don't think they believe they can. And if we fix the offensive line, we have a good line. Anybody can run behind it. OK, that's a good point. We've all seen Leonard on Instagram and he's a clown and his stories like he's a clown. The dude's a clown. <laughs> he clowns on people. And he does it with Instagram stories. He does films in the locker room, picking on people. I would guess Tom Coughlin and Doug Marone aren't big fans of that behavior. Yeah, I haven't even thought about that. That's if, if I had to guess. So he's probably, if you think about Fournette and his personality, he's anti what Tom Coughlin and Marone are. So there's a problem for you right there. James made a good point a couple of weeks, podcasts ago. Fournette was the best player coming out of high school. Fournette was the best running back coming out of college. His whole life, he's been the alpha male top dog. Do whatever you want. I'm still the best player. You think Tom Coughlin and Marone are going to come in and, and and change him now? Hey, you're 22 years old. We're going to change your you're going to change your personality though. That's not realistic. You shouldn't have drafted him if you thought you could do that. So he's a. I, I get I get what you're saying, but if the players on the team vote him as a team captain, then maybe the disconnect isn't with Fournette. Maybe the disconnect is with the coaches. So that's just maybe all I'm going to say. I think the team captain move was another classic, hey, this guy's immature. If we make him captain, maybe he'll step up and act like he should. Possibly. Real quick, just yes or no or a quick thought. Is he back next year yes. on the Jacks? Yes, he is. No. Yes, I think he's cheap enough where, I mean, we, there's no way we can just drop him. I say yes, unless they package him in a deal to move up in the draft. I And this is really quick. I don't know if it would necessarily... I think it could be to boom up in the draft, but it could also be to package him for maybe a different quarterback, a uh, veteran somewhere out there right now. Too. Yeah. So, so we'll, yeah. yeah. So to, yeah. to get a new so, quarterback, yeah, it's a probably, probably a quarterback situation though. Via right. free agency or the draft. I heard Philadelphia is yeah. nice this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> they could use a running back <laughs> for Carson Wentz. <laughs> All right. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I, I have nothing, nothing. <laughs> think we're gonna tra- what, who are you talking that we're going to trade for? What, what what veteran is a team going to trade? Oh, I, we need a running back. Let me trade a quarterback that has value. Well, I didn't say just him. Package deal. You heard package, right? All right. Bring it all together. All right. I think he's gone because they just don't like... The, I mean, you don't take a dude's money away like that if you plan on keeping him. That's, that's messed up. I mean, that's just messed up. 
I think he deserved to have his money taken away. Though I disagree, one hundred percent. He got suspended for defending a run. No, oh. we're, okay, we're not defending. getting Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's about to get a fight in the back of the end zone, and he oh, runs onto the on. field and defends Carlos Hyde, who's new to the team. Oh. That's a guy I wouldn't represent in my team. You're new to the team. We just signed you. If someone has beef with you in the corner of the end zone, I'm I'm defending my boys. Then oh. he should have boys. Let's he go. Then he should have t boned if he ran all the way across the field. Not like slap the side of his helmet. Yeah, let's get these softies that, let's just, get a that just stare and just watch. Like Marona doesn't make a face at all during the game and then takes it's my fault. Yeah, we know it's your fault. The team sucks. All right, do something about it. <laughs> okay, this next question's from King. <laughs> <laughs> and he's at the Noah Bennett. He says, I think there's a lot of potential trade candidates this offseason. Fournette, Malik Jackson, etc. But who are some surprise trades slash cuts we may see? Telvin and, or Bouye possibly? Not endorsing it, just wondering. I think Telvin's a real possibility. No, I don't even know if that's necessarily a dark horse anymore. Because like Joey said earlier, we have Miles Jack and Telvin Smith are the same player. Um, Miles Jack's cheaper right now. And I, I think Miles Jack would thrive a lot better in that position, not being the middle linebacker. And bring in a true middle linebacker. And I'm, I actually think, you know, I mean, I don't think Miles Jack had a great season, but I don't think he had a, I don't think he had a bad season. I thought he played, you know, pretty well all year, considering it was his first year in really doing that, you know, so you have to, you have to consider that as well. You know, again, reports have started to come out about Telvin not being the greatest in the locker room. Um, so maybe they package him. I think Malik is, I mean, I, I don't know. I like Malik. I wish he could stay. I just he he's great in the community. He's great on the field. I I would love to see him stay. So I know everyone assumes he's gone, and maybe he is, but he played an awful lot against Houston in the last week of the season uh, for a guy that's out the door. So I don't know. That would be a, gr- a pleasant surprise so if he actually Eric stayed. Flowers. Yeah, well, yeah, two different oh. scenarios there. Yeah, <laughs> oh. out of out of pure desperation, I think, and uh, also so did. Robinson. Corey I don't even Robinson? know. It was Corey Robinson. Corey Robinson. Yeah. My boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were I could have so blocked J.J. Watt. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to blame <laughs> T.J. Yeldon for not going out there. <laughs> nope, I'm good. I'm going to nope. just chill on the bench here. I think... Um, yeah. I, don't think was, I don't think it was that he sat out. I think it was how he sat out. You know, you can, you can tell the coaches, I'm going to sit out, but you can still be engaged somewhat with your teammates. But what does he have to gain to that at this point? He's There's nothing, falling. but just, it's just, to me, that's just being a good, like you said, you're all for Fournette running 60 yards to defend. Go stand on the sidelines and cheer on the guys that are on the field. Okay. Okay. Who's blaming him, though? I didn't hear a lot of hoopla about Yeldon, Yeldon? being blamed. No, I don't think too many people did. It was just that he was, you know, Maroon sitting. said there was a player he didn't name, but I mean, everyone assumes it was Yeldon because he was active and didn't play. He said there was a player... He said there was two players he had problems with. One player who was active and, and declined to go into the game and another player who didn't support his team. And one being Fournette, one being Yeldon. They were sitting there well, with each other on the bench. It's hard for a coach not to... I mean, I, I expect him to at least say something about Yeldon. I mean, because they want a guy to play whether they're going to be there or not next year. But, I mean, they were easy pickings. I mean, the camera was on them. I mean, half the game just sitting on the bench. Well, so. that's because that was more entertaining than the it, game itself. Exactly. So, I mean, they had to address it to some degree. Hey, you want your running back to play? Draft an offensive lineman in the first round. <laughs> That's that? true. That's, yeah. That's a good point. Okay, I, but I think to answer uh, King's question here, um, I think some surprise cuts, I mean, is uh, Keelan Cole, would he be a surprise cut to anybody oh. if he was cut? It, the only reason it would be a surprise is because he's, well, we pay him like six bucks a game. <laughs> yeah. you know, he's just we dirt pay cheap. McDonald's coupons. Yeah. <laughs> he, he could be he, still on the special teams, I guess, but man, that guy's. I, 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 he's, I, I think the, the biggest surprise cut that may surprise people is they, I, I think they might cut Fournette. So they just might. Straight up cut just him. Straight up cut him. So when I said that two weeks ago, you said I was an idiot. Well, I still oh, think you're an idiot, man. but I've changed my mind in two weeks about this particular thing. Oh, fair enough. Do you think I'll they, take that. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> my question would be, do you think it's a straight up cut if they're able to, without the, the NFL Players Association winning back the guaranteed money? He won't. He won't. I mean, it's, Coughlin it, has it, a history of losing it's, all, it's, a it's lot, almost no, all it's of those. Contract. It's in his contract. If he gets suspended, he loses it, and he got suspended. They had every right, right. to do that. Yeah. They just he, don't ever he wasn't choose. suspended by the team. So he was suspended by saying. the team for missing the team picture. That was different. But he was suspended by the league for th- for you know doing this. Antics. I don't know. I'm just saying like there's been crazier ones that have happened with this that he could still get some of that money, at least half of it back. I wouldn't be shocked at all if if he wins completely with how that goes nowadays. 
Isn't most of that guaranteed money incentive based? Yeah, I mean, it, it was his incentive based money. He, so, he had I mean, 27 guaranteed, didn't he? He had yeah, his whole no, he still gets contract. guaranteed, yeah. but it, it's he lost all his incentives. Okay. okay. So, I wonder if he, he was he, even going to meet them anyway, see, based on how many. Well, he had you know, two how much years played. worth of them, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I thought this was going in for the next two seasons. So this is just strictly the incentive-based money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the rest of his contract. Though. So he still gets seven million per year, but he had stuff on top of that. Apparently. Right. Like if he hit like a thousand yards in a season, they'd give him another million, another million or something okay. like that. So now if he does that, he doesn't get that money. Okay. Okay. Which is dumb. Why would you take that away from a player? It's keep sending a message, and we'll keep losing games. How about that? Yeah. Any surprise cuts for you, Joey? I, I wouldn't be surprised if anybody gets cut. I don't think Bouye gets cut at all. Wait, are we recording right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Ask him that again so okay. he can actually talk in the mic. So, Joe, do you see the Jags cutting anybody? Surprise cuts. I mean, cutting. yeah, they're definitely cutting and surprise. I wouldn't be surprised if they cut anybody. I mean, who knows? I think anybody would be up for grabs for the most part, but. Not everybody. I mean, not. Well, I mean. We know we're not cutting Campbell. That's I, right. I hope not. If they do, then I'd have a serious problem. But well, they already announced. If if you followed our Twitter, yeah, we, we actually said it. Then. Yeah. Well, just because they said it doesn't mean they don't end up doing it. I mean, they can sell. They want to. Uh, Bouye. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I suppose. I mean, I mean, they didn't come out and say they were keeping Mercedes Lewis. So that's all I know. Yeah. If they cut Calais Campbell, I'm gonna cry in the corner for a yeah, week. Yeah, I they agree, won't. man. That guy's rock solid. I don't that's think... a Tom Coughlin Roan guy right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's anti Fournette. Bouye Stan. I don't see why they would cut him. Do you? No, I mean, he's getting paid a lot, but, you know. He's played pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, he's not bad. It's not an issue. I mean, he didn't have the numbers like he did last year, but at the same time, I mean, we Nobody need to keep did. the defense no. intact yeah. as much as we possibly could, can, so. Well, can. <laughs> Speaking I don't, of can. I don't, is that a surprise? Would that be a surprise one at all? No. 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 I mean, you could probably, uh, minus like Lender, you could probably cut that entire offensive line. I don't think it would be a shock oh, to anybody. You can't cut Norwell or, or, Cam- or Robinson. Or Norwell. Well, Robinson, yeah. I mean, I don't. He wasn't there all year, though. Forget I mean, him. yeah. Corey Robinson was. <laughs> Cam's twin brother. That's right. Hey, there goes JJ Watt. Uh, actually, I'll take that. Back. Hey, there he goes again. I have, I have thought about somebody. We should try cut, and stop him. <laughs> if they cut Rashad Green, I'll be amazed because that guy is stuck around like a sand spur, man. Yeah. If they finally cut him. He's a good. Dave Caldwell like, of the good. wide receivers. <laughs> they cut him. They just bring him That's back. In the they cut him for a good and he never shows back up. Yeah. I'll be amazed. <laughs> they cut him. They just bring him back when we need it. We need the catch the most. You must uh, be able to evaluate late round talent really well. I think he just like shows up <laughs> with the uniform on and they're like, did anybody cut him? No. Okay. And he's like, <laughs> must have some kind of like I guess we should cut him a check. Like George Sands when he shows up for the job. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> some kind of bat signal. They hit it and Rashad yeah. just shows up. I thought we fired him. I guess not. There, there he is. It's <laughs> running sprints with the rest of the guys. Writing his name on masking tape over Clay's Campbell's locker. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, besides besides Campbell, obviously Ramsey, you know, and, and then the rookies, you know, um, I wouldn't really be surprised. And then the, the names we mentioned on the offensive line, Robinson, Linder. Um, Norwell. Norwell. Yeah, thank you. So, but other than that, no, I mean, I think it's, uh, they're going to probably send some guys packing while hoping to, hoping to send a message as well. Jason, you said Fournette could be one of those. That would be a huge message. I think, I think, uh, on the other side of that would be Telvin. I think those are the two to really keep an eye out on. All right. So I think that's enough, uh, Jaguars talk for this episode. Let's go real quick and give our Super Bowl predictions as the playoffs start this Saturday, wildcard weekend. Just who you think is going to be in the Super Bowl and who you think is going to win the Super Bowl. And we'll start with who's who's ready? Me. All right, Jason, yeah. go. Who's going to win it? I'll tell you right now. It's going to be Chicago Bears. Okay. They're going to win it. I know. Sorry, Joey. So I went first. Stole it. Straight yeah. up stole. And I think they're going to play the Chiefs. And I think they're going to beat them. Mm. Okay. Joey? I'm going to go with the Bears win. I don't know who they're going to play, but I think the Bears win as well. Okay. Robert? I think the Saints somehow sneak in there and I'm getting the... Another win. It's a good pick. Yeah, another one seed. I'm and picking. This, I'm, I'm picking the Saints, and I'm gonna. Unfortunately, I'm picking them to beat. Well, not unfortunately that they beat. I'm happy they're gonna beat them. But the Patriots, I think they're gonna be back in the really? Super Bowl. I'm going yeah. the same. It's hard to, it's, for me. It's hard to pick against the Saints. They're playing at home in the playoffs, and then the game is at a dome in Atlanta, which is very close to New Orleans, by the way. True. So uh, I think that's a you know a, a easy road. Well, not easy, well, but it's a, indoor, it's a healthy. Though. What's that? A lot of teams play indoor. The Texans, yeah, but, the Colts. But, close but the, the Superdome in New Orleans during the playoffs, yeah. it doesn't get much tougher than that. Yeah, And they're they just a different team at home. And, uh, and I think I think New England is New England. You know, 
number two seed, you know, and I think they're just they just know how to turn it on in the playoffs. So, all right, real quick. Uh, so we have what is it? I think four games this weekend, Wild Card Weekend. Uh, Robert, give us a rundown on Saturday. What are the games on Saturday? Saturday, four thirty-five is Colts Texans. I have then- Colts in that one, by the way, on the road beating the Texans. Joey, go on Texans. Colts, Colts. Okay. All right. Second game, eight fifteen Saturday. Seahawks, Cowboys. Ooh. Seahawks, definitely Seahawks. Cowboys are downward slot. Don't trust Jason Garrett whatsoever. Ooh, I'm gonna take the Cowboys. I'm taking, I'm taking Cowboys. the Cowboys. All right, taking the Cowboys. I'm taking Cowboys as well. All right, Sunday one is Chargers Ravens. Chargers, 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 Chargers. All right, Sunday four forty. We got Eagles Bears. Bears. Bears, obviously the Bears. Yeah, I'm just gonna say Eagles just to say it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. I'm Wouldn't surprise Eagles me at all. made the playoffs. I am too. I don't know how they made it. <laughs> uh, Nick Foles. Yeah. Future Jags quarterback. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Hopefully. All right. Maybe. So those are our uh, our picks for Wild Card Weekend. We're going to keep everyone uh, posted on any other news that's coming out. Check our Twitter page at Another Jags Pod, and uh, also. Facebook and Instagram, another Jags podcast. Well, we don't do a lot of news on those. Uh, we should, I suppose, but definitely. Maybe Joey runs it. That's Maybe. right. Um, runs what? I'm sorry I wasn't listening. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> check us out on Twitter, especially, though. We will try and keep you up to date on any any news and goings on for the Jaguars. It's going to be an interesting offseason, boys, and we're going to be here every single week letting everyone know our thoughts, answering your questions. We appreciate Uh, your feedback we appreciate your input we appreciate you being part of this show it's been 50 episodes and uh, we're excited for what is to come in the next 50 and we're we're believing this time next year it's going to be a lot happier result and uh the season won't be over at this point so any any last thoughts before we wrap it up love we made it 50 let's do another that's right 50 Yeah. yeah man all right on that note go jacks